I'm in Bangkok, Thailand, and today I am pretty close to the Grand Palace right now at Ratanakosan, and I've just spotted something quite unique. It's a pig statue. I'm gonna go and have a closer look. So this pig memorial was built in 1913 and it was to celebrate uh, the Queen's 50th birthday and yes she was born in the year of the pig. This cool uh, memorial was designed by her son who was the pr who, her son the prince. I've been living in Bangkok for a year and a half now and the more time I spend here the more easier it is to, for me to spot some unique and beautiful things and in particular some of the art uh, and architecture. Now I've spotted this really cool looking building, it's about, I think it's a former palace. Uh, I'm going to go and have a closer look and learn what it's all about. So today I'm going to be touring Bangkok, uh, in particular the Ban Rak area and Sampan Tuong. I'm going to have a look at some of the street art. I'm, I've been spotting a lot of street art around lately, so I want to go and have a closer look. So uh, I'm going to go for a bit of a wander to, um, what's it called, Sampan Tuong district. So I'm going to go for a walk now. I'm in Ratanakosan now. I'm going to head down to the Chinatown area, uh, Ong, what's it called, uh, Klong Ong An, which is a recently kind of uh, uh, redeveloped area. With, it's, got, it's quite famous for some of the street art there, but also a place called Talat Noi. And then I'm going to also end up at, uh, what's it called, the uh, Ban Rak area. So let's go for a little bit of a wander with a street art focus. People all over the world love a front door park, even if that means locking the doorway. Thanks for watching Luke Walks. Today, we're looking at art and architecture. Now this intersection here, architecturally, aesthetically, and historically, it is very, very significant. Uh, I have the Wat Prakau, I've got the Ministry of Defense, and I have Samron Palace here, Sam, Saman Ron, Saram, Saram Ron Palace here. The symmetry of this place and the color schemes, I can't help but feel like I'm on the set of a Wes Anderson film. Fantastic walk around here. These, this yellow here, this Ministry of Defense building, right beside this palace here with the pinkish hues here, just a beautiful color scheme. This is really cool walking around here. And I'm walking straight to the really amazing uh, Grand Palace area with all the temples, all these impressive cannons. By the way, in a future video, I'm going to do a, a deeper exploration of all of this area, the Grand Palace area, Wat Prakau, Wat Prok, Wat Po, Wat, uh, Chet, uh, what is it, Chetupon, uh, but not this video. Today, it's a focus on art and architecture. Now this is Saran Rom Palace and it was bought, uh, sorry not bought, built by uh, King Rama IV. I'm very close to the Grand Palace, the giant swing, 
and the Chow Praia River and Khao San Road. So this is a very good location if you're traveling um, and a tourist within in uh, Bangkok, you'll probably uh, wander around this area. So it's very easy to come and have a look at this really cool, cool palace. It was designed by a British architect, a designer, called Henry Alabaster. Now, Henry Alabaster was a British diplomat at the time. He was, he was also an advisor to the king. And this was, a, a, and it was built in 1933. And, and this was built as a palace for King Rama IV to retire in, because he was planning to abdicate from the throne and then come and retire in this place. However, disaster struck and King Rama IV passed away before he abdicated from the throne. And this was also before construction finished. So King Rama IV never actually got to see this palace completed because construction uh, was finished in 19, 1868. So the palace was handed over to Rama IV's younger brother who was King Rama V. King Rama V lived here for a short time before he eventually moved out. In 1884, Prince Oscar from Sweden uh, was planning a trip to Bangkok to visit here. So this prompted King Rama V to renovate and tidy up so that the visiting prince could had a place to reside. After King Rama V spruced it up and Prince Oscar stayed here, Prince Prince Oscar spoke very highly of the place. He was very, very impressed with the place. So King Rama V decided to keep this place uh, for visiting dignitaries. And, and soon after Prince Oscar, soon after Prince Oscar, there was a visit from Prince George from Greece and Denmark also. And there was a visit from Prince Fushimi Horiyas Horiyasu. Prince Fushimi Horo Yasu from Japan. So those dignitaries all stayed in this grand palace. Sounds like a title of a Wes Anderson film. In 1932, Saranon Palace became the Ministry of Foreign, Foreign Affairs and it remained the Ministry of Foreign Affairs right up until 1992. Uh, that's when they shifted to a new headquarters in the Ratchatawi area. So this building is very significant for any countries who are a member of the ASEAN, A-E-A-S-E-A-N, the ASEAN Five. The ASEAN Five may, uh, countries, the ASEAN Five countries are Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia and the Philippines. And the ASEAN declaration was signed in this very building on on the 8th of August, 1967. This is when the, they established the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, right here in this magnificent building. Now, I've just been doing some research, and it says that there's a park nearby. Uh, now, this park was the park that was used by King Rama V uh, to keep his collection of rare and exotic plants, but he also had his pri own private zoo. So I'm just gonna go and find this Saran Wan Park and have a bit of a look around. I do love the park as well, so uh, let's go and find that. indeed found Sauron Rom Park. So I'm just going to go and check it out now. The Thais do a, do a good park. So let's go and have a bit of a look and see if I can learn a little bit more about this magnificent park. I'm just imagining 
imagining this area here during the King time of King Rama V with visiting dignitaries, perhaps some ballroom dancing here or performances going on. Stopping by the gazebo just over here for some high tea. Very ornate uh, things here in this park. Just picturing what it was like in its heyday. Of course, this is the place where for the brass band. The brass band could sit up there and entertain while the, uh, while the royal family and the dignitaries enjoyed the park, enjoyed the king's uh, private zoo. I wonder what animals he had here. And also the exotic plants that he collected from all over the world. This is very nice actually. It's a lovely walking around here. It's also good imagining what it was like yesteryear. So I wander around this cool park and imagine what things are like in yesteryear. There's one thing I can't imagine. King Rama V had over 90 wives. I can't imagine what that would, what that would be like. I reckon there'd be some, like if, uh, when I imagine that, there'd be some that I'd probably forget their names. I, met, I could just picture walking around the markets one day and bumping into somebody and saying, you look familiar, do we know each other? And she responds, yeah, I'm your wife. I'm like, ah, oh, that's right. That's, that's where I knew you from. Now, there is a monument here I'm just going to find, which was, a, from what I read, it's dedicated to one of his favourite. Oh, I'm just going to this very clear. <laughs> Actually, on a hot day, it's quite refreshing. Uh, yeah, some, somewhere around here is a monument to one of King Ramaphai's favourite. It says, one of his favourite wives who passed away tragically. So I'm just going to find that and I'll tell you a little story about that one. There's an old, uh, old, old pavilion here that looks really interesting. Uh, first of all, up on the rooftop, looks like a fantastic area for nighttime parties. But then down below, I'm trying to imagine what was inside there. And I've got two theories. It's either, uh, it's like a glass house, so some of the king's exotic plants were kept here. Well, the other theory was maybe this is where he kept some of the, uh, some of his uh, big cats. Maybe there were some tigers here, um, or exotic animals from abroad. No, but it is a really uh, fantastic old building. The windows are kind of falling up, falling off. Would actually be a, a, a good, not so much a Wes Anderson film, but you could imagine a horror film being filmed in here at night time. You know, somebody being stuck in here at night, trying to escape, but the bars are on the windows. Maybe I should uh, forget the making these kind of uh, mini documentaries. I think maybe I should start getting a bit more creative. Maybe some kind of a horror film or a Wes Anderson style film. Only problem is I don't really have the time. <laughs> time and resources. So this marble monument here is a memorial to one of King Rama V's wives who tragically drowned. Now the story goes that uh, not only did she drown, but her son also, a prince, drowned, but she was also pregnant at the time. So all three lives were lost in a, in a boating accident. Now the laws at the time prevented any commoners from touching royals. So these deaths could have, tragi uh, could have actually been prevented have have the people have the, had the had the assistance and the helpers been able to actually reach out and touch and save the queen and her son
is an excellent little park. I'd uh, recommend anyone come and have a spend a bit of uh, some quiet time here. It's not very busy at all. It's really cool. The temperature's really cool. So Bangkok's normally really hot, but here, this park with all the shade and the sprinklers going, it's really nice and cool. Uh, really peaceful, really interesting stuff to look at. So I'm glad I visited. Uh, I've had enough though. It's time for me to explore the streets. I'm looking for some street art. old days during the time of King Rama I when this city the capital was first built. Krung Tep was uh, they had fortified walls but then King Rama I had a lot of canals dug as well. Now this is on the eastern side of the Rata Kosan uh, area where the Grand Palace is and the Samaron uh, Palace. So this Kong here this canal was built as a protection so on the what is it? Western side, there's a Chow Prayer River to protect. And then this was built on the eastern side. And in addition to the canal, there was also some fortified walls. And there was a couple of uh, significant towers uh, dotted along this canal as well. Uh, we'll explore this area in a future video. And in case you're wondering, it does smell like a bit of a toilet here. But I'm not sure if it's the Klong or it's the tuk-tuk drivers uh, where they come to shoot the rabbit. Yes, one more magnificent building. There's the Ministry of Defense here. Beautiful color schemes. I love it. The greens and the yellows, that kind of orangey brick, browny orange brick. Another, another set uh, for a Wes Anderson film. south and look for some street art. good example of uh, the two types of architecture that is around much of Bangkok actually uh, you'll see there's the the two-story or the three-story shop house which is really popular they've got the shop down below and upstairs where the family lives but then you also start this is kind of like a newer style which is more like apartment buildings uh, and factories or offices so there's a bit of a mixture of the shop house and these uh, kind of, what is it, two, four, five, five story, seven story, nine story buildings around the area, around the Ratakosan area, but also around the Banarak and Sampan Tawong area. So I'm gonna keep an eye out for that and I'll point, point out some interesting architecture as we also do our street art tour. this neighborhood with the use of the soft yellow and greens everywhere. Really cool, it looks really good, I like it. Another interesting development in recent years was the MRT. So there's an underground subway system that's been put in. Um, and unfortunately, some of these fabulous old buildings have had to be ripped down to make way for this, uh, this uh, subway system. Now that seems to be the tune at the time uh, 
in the in, in, in 2000s, there seems to be, and particularly now from the 2020s onwards, there seems to be a fair bit of progress going on in Bangkok with the sky trains and also with the underground system. So as a result of that, some old buildings have tragically been torn down. And also, sadly, with this the way progress is, some communities have been lost as a result. But fortunately, these old buses are still these old buses. It's fascinating, some of the buses that drive around when the bus network was first implemented here in Bangkok. Bangkok um, Metropolitan, the government at the time, purchased a bunch of buses. None of them have been upgraded. So they're clunky old machines, but they're so character filled. Here comes the yellow version now. Wonderful old machines. Little piece of history you can ride every day here in Bangkok. Ola Thai Tappers is where I've just stopped for a beer and a cool down a bit and the nice air conditioning. Uh, this is a really good example of a an old shop house that's been renovated. So uh, it's like a modern cafe tapas bar. Really cool, looking really, uh, really. It's got a nice kind of a feel about the place uh, within, and it's kind of tried to keep some of that old architecture intact or that old building intact. So over the, over the road here is one called On the Legacy of Nine Suave Raised Beef. And it's a really cool, old looking shop with a chic, modern uh, restaurant downstairs. So I'm gonna keep an eye out for some of this kind of architecture as I wander around these streets today. But I'm feeling pretty good after uh, two cheeky beers. Feeling refreshed, I got a bit of spring on my step. So let's keep exploring, looking at some unique architecture and also some street art and avoid getting hit by these old school buses and tuk tuks gold shops and trophy shops everywhere around this side of town love it If you want to know about more about gold shops, check out my last video. There's uh, two gold shops just over there. So in the last video that I made, uh, I go into a little bit more detail about gold. The old buses. Gold in uh, Chinatown. And hello, we've got a little bit of street art. So I want to see more street art. Um, that's my plan today. like a welcome sign here. This building behind me is very historically important and architecturally as well. It was built uh, to celebrate the 150th uh, anniversary of the Chakri dynasty and it was built by King Rama the seventh now King Rama seven um, built this one it was in 1932 and this and the building is called Sala Chalom Grung Theatre now this building is the first building uh, cinema it was built as a cinema, uh, and it is the first cinema or theatre to have air conditioning, and it was also the first one to have sound, have a sound system. So prior to this, there were the silent, it was a silent theatre. So now, in the 2020s, this is a place where they have live shows. 
and I'm going to come back and see a live show. It's not open today, but I'm going to come back and, and watch one of these live shows. They're, they're called the Con. It's a Con uh, kind of a unique Thai live performance. So I'm going to come back and have a look at this in a future video. But today we're just going to admire the architecture and the historical significance of this place. Now this theatre is actually on a very important road which is the Chadon Grung Road and it runs all the way to Ban Ra district. Um, and this season, so this season of videos that I'm doing at the moment is all about the Ban Ra area, area and Sampan Tawong area. So I'm really exploring this road a lot and getting to know it and sharing the experience with all of you as well. Anyway, the, uh, it's a green light, so I'm going to cross the road and I want to find some street art. Desperate to find some street art. Gee, that's an interesting building. Forget the street art, I'm going down to have a look at that building down there. around along Chelong Krung Road is so interesting. I just passed uh, lots of gold shops. I also had a couple of beers at a really cool cafe. Uh, I found a, a shop that sold uh, pool cues and now I'm at a shop which seems to sell um, like police and military helmets. You can even buy some um, like sashes, memorabilia now. I need to investigate this a little bit more because I remember when I lived in Cambodia that the police force there, they had to purchase their own uniforms and there were shops all around where you could buy where it was tailor-made uniforms for the, for, the, um, for the police force. Yeah, I'm curious about this, so compared to Cambodia's right next door, so I wonder if there's any kind of a similar thing, but I wonder if I could purchase myself a police helmet. Maybe even a sword? I could even... Um, maybe I could be a emig uh, immigration police? I could get some of these badges? I'm really curious about this shop. I'm going to explore this later. everything in Chinatown. Behind me is a gun shop. Pistol, they got pistols, rifles. It's about 25 meters away from the place where I could buy a police uniform or a military uniform. Jeez, if I get invited to a uh, dress-up party, I'm gonna have a pretty, pretty authentic outfit. Already got a good one in mind. Or, if I'm gonna make a film, Maybe some horror film, or yeah, what kind of a film? A Wes Anderson film. I know where I can get some pretty good looking props. In fact, the Wes Anderson style film. Uh, he's usually got some pretty cool outfits and uniforms, so I know where to come. If I'm gonna have a character in my, uh, in my Wes Anderson style film, which is gonna be some kind of a military figure, he's gonna have a real gun, and he's going to have an authentic uniform. It's a cool looking building too. I like they've got, again, the greens and the yellows. Quite popular around this side of town. Plenty of air pollution here in Bangkok from those dirty old buses. Behind me, this is the building that houses the Samrot MRT station. Now the MRT station is the underground rail network here in Bangkok 
and it's actually kind of newish. Uh, now, I like the idea that what they've done here in this building for the railway station here, they've kind of housed it within an old style building. So it kind of, it, it matches the architecturally, it kind of matches the area. However, it's this fantastic network of rails under, under, and, and modern technology underneath our feet. So I do like, I like what they've done here. starts to fall this is the time I look for some kind of a pub where I can just sit down have a couple of beers and wait for the rain to pass so some good examples of the uh, different types of architecture here in uh, San Pantuong in the Bunrak area so if you can see this blue building right here this is one of the traditional shop houses where they've got the shop down below. Very open, easy for the customers to, to, to wander in. And then the, the, the people will live up top there. And right next door is kind of a little bit more modern. It's a, it's a hotel. It's got four stories. And then behind it, whoop, sorry. Then we've got this newer, you know, fast forward a few uh, decades. Now you've actually got an apartment or office style building. So there's a nice uh, comparison with the three styles. Going from the shop house to a kind of a bigger accommodation to the like the five story, you know, three, five, seven story, even nine story to this nine story building. With very unique kind of architecture too. Very kind of industrial. It doesn't look very warm and friendly at all, that building. this place behind a pillar watching this crazy storm and one thing that does freak me out a little bit is the, the the lightning here the thunder is really high pitched and it's really really close There's trees falling down everywhere signs are being blown over drains are clogged I think I might uh, call it a day. Uh, I did have ambitions to go and film at film some street art, but I think I might have to make a part two. I think I'll have to come back another day and explore the um, the street art when the weather is a little bit more favourable. But I've had a good adventure today. I didn't expect this happening. I didn't expect to, it to conclude so quickly, so abruptly, and in this manner. But it was nice to see uh, that palace, the pig, uh, some of the architecture, nice park. Uh, but I do have a thirst 
to see more architecture. I've got a thirst for exploring the Grand Palace in greater detail and depth. And the whole Ratan Rata Cossin area. Ratan Cossin, Ratan Cossin area. Um, and, I, you know, one thing I'm actually inspired to do, when I grow up, when I win the lotto, I'd like to... I'd like to buy one of those shop houses. I don't know what I'm going to sell down below. Maybe, maybe weapons, maybe video equipment, maybe, maybe beer. I'm not sure. Just like the idea. I like. I'd love to get one of those old uh, townhouses and renovate as well. Uh, so that's on my dream list. But anyway, next episode, I promise. It'll focus on the street art. But today, it's goodbye and good luck to you all. And I'll, I'll send you off with some storm scenes. Actually, that's an idea for another video. The rain, the sound of the rain is very soothing. Not this thunder. The sound of the rain is very soothing. So perhaps I could collect, uh, collect some... Um, Soundscapes of rain falling in the Bangkok streets. It's a good vision of it as well. Never short of an idea. I am always short of time and resources, but I'm never short of an idea. himself a nice big rifle he had his rifle in his box and on his shirt it said the Lord is my shepherd as I sit here watching the rain and reflecting on the day just thinking Thai people are so friendly well they're friendly to me at Ola Thai Tapas Bar, I got a free beer. I just wandered in and I went to pay the bill. I ordered two beers and I got a free one. Thai people, I say it, I, I count it all the time, are so friendly and kind. But they're also very funny. Just check out this. Now this road that I'm on too, Charon, Charion, Charion Krung Road was actually the first proper road that was built in all of Bangkok. See, Bangkok, uh, back in the ye old days, was a very much a river city. And the modes of uh, transferring um, things like people, but also products, used all the Kongs and the canals, and Chow Phraya River. Um, but it was when the Bun Ruk area developed, so it was around the King Rama one time, uh, that the early colonial period, they, they, there was a need for a road. So this road here, Bangkok's first proper road. 
So wandering up and down this road, you, you, you're going to see some very interesting things. It's such a such a unique, amazing road. And yes, I know, I know. I probably said the I pronounced the name wrong. Char Charun Charun Krum. Please keep in mind, I've only been in Bangkok for a short time. And I'm learning about Bangkok, I'm learning about the language, so I'm gonna make mistakes. So please go easy on me, I'm trying my best. Interestingly enough, the road at the moment around here resembles much more of a river or a canal than a road. Uh, which brings me to something that I read once and it really relates. Uh, if, you're, if you're coming from a country like, like I, I am, I'm coming from Australia where the, where the road rules and the traffic flow in a very kind of a, uh, predictable manner. People stay in their lanes. When you come to Bangkok, it's a bit more fluid, a bit more random. And I remember reading it, the way it was described is it's like, culturally, Thailand is used to, uh, Thai people are used to navigating canals and, and, and operating boats. So they use that kind of same philosophy on the road. So guy, uh, when it comes to things like white lines, when it comes to things like turning and merging, it is, the, the, the traffic kind of does flow a little bit more like a, a canal rather than a, a roadway. So if you have that philosophy in mind when you're navigating the roads in Bangkok, you probably have an easier time. You kind of just go with the flow. Don't pay too much attention to the road markings. Just go with the flow of the currents and the tides and the waves of the traffic and you'll, you'll probably have a much easier time navigating the roadways. at the moment uh, the, the storm has kind of passed I just checked the I just checked the weather app and the storm ha storm has definitely passed so actually now could be a good time to go and look at the street art because uh, I think the light will be really nice you know the reflection um, from the road and you know the Sun is kind of you know it's a gentle light and the, the street art will be all covered in kind of almost like washed and shiny so I am actually pretty keen to go and have a look at some of the street art or else I just pull up stumps and go home. Now here's one of these uh, townhouses or what do you call shop houses that's turned into a really, that's been transformed into a trendy, a really cool, chic looking cafe. It's called Varan. And you know what, if I was smart, I should have been there watching the storm go by because uh, beautiful windows there I could have been sitting there with a nice cup of coffee watching the storm but rather I was stuck near a gun shop with flying corrugated iron around me actually there's another interesting building down there I'm gonna go and have a look at that now this is an interesting building it's got some very very retro style outfits and weird mannequins now it's the sign on the front door says no filming so I'm trying to be a little bit sneaky that's why I'm walking out the front of it filming it over my shoulder but it is what's it called the Olympic and it's a step back in time There's some weird mannequins there quite quite funny I'm gonna go and have a closer look but I I'm not allowed to film. Here's another one of those cool shop house, three-story shop house cafes that have been transformed into a really modern, cool cafe. You'll see some really unique architecture on corners. So that 
we got this nice, got this nice chic cafe here on the corner called Vima Lin. It's a, a really kind of like a triangular shaped uh, shop house. It's really interesting. But then we got this white corner building as well. I've got no idea what it is, but it's so interesting. It's just got an ATM at the bottom. I love the shapes at the top, the circles, and then it's got the square shapes down below. And then right beside it is a very interesting building. And we're opposite old, old CM market area as well, in case you're wanting to get your bearings. But you want to come and check it out yourself. This is a really interesting uh, corner. I'm starting to think, why am I standing out here in the rain? Uh, and also, we've just had the monster of all storms. And now I can see blue sky. Uh, I'm my plans for the rest of the day. I feel like I'm as confused as the weather. It's like, I sh should I go home? Should I duck for cover? Should I walk the streets? I don't know what I'm doing. So on uh, Yawarat Yawarat Road, there's over 130 gold shops. But I tell you what, Charon 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 Gurung. It's got to be close to 100. There's just so many gold shops. Can't understand why there's just so many gold shops. For my Wes Anderson style film, I'm gonna get a tailor-made uniform of some sort. It's gonna have gold, stars, it's gonna be very regal. It's gonna use some some kind of a, a soft pastel color palette, and it's gonna be magical. And the plot line's all gonna be about gold. Something to do with gold. Because there's so many different uh, sets I can use around the streets here of Bangkok involving gold. So cool uniforms, cool outfits, soft uh, uh, yellowy kind of a green pastel kind of color, color palette and gold. My Wes Anderson film starting to come together now. old days this Bangkok was referred to as the Venice of the East there was so many Klongs which is the Thai word for a canal so many of these kind of canals around and the walkways beside them really cool but sadly not anymore because most of them got filled in uh, because of the use of increase of the use of cars so there was more need for roads to be built so a lot of Klongs became sadly became roads um, but one can only picture back in the ye old days when you uh, could wander around the Klongs or take the boat around the Klongs as well. Uh, it's really evocative kind of uh, of images. Anyway, look at this cool. Uh, this is called the Yak Thai Hotel. You can see how they've taken the old building and put this, put that kind of modern, modern aesthetic on it. It's really stylish, I like it a lot. There's another cool cafe, it's called Alice's Cafe. And it looks really fantastic. And what's even better, you walk out the door and you see this beautiful old temple. Let's just see if I can show you. And then right beside is another one. This is Simiao Cafe. Cafe. So this is another really stylish, so another really stylish, cool cafe as I cross the road. So this is uh, one of the old buildings that they've renovated into a really funky, cool cafe. And this this area around here is just littered with these stylish, stylish cafes, hotels restaurants where they've taken the old uh, shop house uh, and converted it to a funky new uh, cafe retaining that 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 building but putting that modern vibe inside really nice i like it a lot
this temple here is insanely beautiful. I just can't believe it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to come back here and do a closer inspection of this place because it is phenomenal. Now, I was on the fence whether I should go home or I should uh, head to the street art area. But I've seen so much amazing architecture that I've, I've changed my plan a bit. So this video is going to be mostly about the architecture uh, because I'm also out, just about out of battery. And then I'm going to have to come back and do the street art in the next video. But uh, look at these two guys who are the guarding the uh, guarding the temple here at the moment. Very Wes Anderson-like these uniforms. I can imagine these these two characters here They're having a prominent role in a Wes Anderson film. Now, when I when you leave this temple here. The first thing that greets you is this uh, shop house once again. But look at the curved, curved veranda, the balcony area. Very Art Deco style. But then right beside it, a really chic, cool, character-filled old building that looks like it's been there for centuries. And then right beside it, look at this, we've got a green cafe bookstore. And it is brilliant. I love it. One of the good things about traveling and exploring is uh, sometimes your plans change and most often in my case I've found that the plans change for the better. I had no intention of uh, touring these back streets here but geez I've enjoyed it, it's really good. I definitely didn't plan to get caught in a thunderstorm like I did uh, but I had a really wonderful day. I'm, I'm really enjoying looking at these uh, really wonderful old architecture. Uh, it's This is a good place good place around here just to get lost and wander around. Amazing architecture and art. I think I just got a raindrop right on my face. Yeah, how's that? Yeah, it's phenomenal. Look at this detail here. This this is just outside big big temple. And the, the gold and the sparkle here. Beautiful blues and the oranges. It's just so beautiful. So I've got this uh, beautiful Chetty here and Temple, which I'm going to explore in future videos. It made remarkable architecture there and the colours just so wonderful. Then we've got this modern uh, office building just here. I like that kind of almost uh, cage-like uh, feature out the front. And then the, uh, the verandas up here. That balcony area and those, those, those rectangular shapes up top there, quite nice. Now just over the road from this little intersection, there's, this was actually a, a former print shop. This was a printing house and now it's uh, no longer a printing house, it's been converted into a restaurant and cafe. So I'm going to stop in there for a coffee or maybe a little snack. But the outside of the building is just remarkable. It'd actually be easy to walk past that and not really think too much about it. Uh, but inside is a really cool cafe. I'm gonna go and have a look. It's only been open about two months, so I really wanna check it out. I like trying new, new spots.
Okay, man, a mistake. This is not the place I was thinking of that's only been open for two months. The place I'm looking for is called The Craftsman. Uh, Craftsman at Bong, uh, Bong Rung Krung, I think. Please forgive me if I've said that wrong. But, um, I'm trying, I'm learning. But also, learning and exploring. So this place here is not open yet. So I'm gonna to have to come, I'm gonna put a bookmark and come back and explore this place later because it looks cool. I've just seen, they've got the, uh, they're inside at the moment doing some work, doing some renovation. Now the Craftsman is actually a block away. So I'm gonna go one more block and see what else I find along the way. So that uh, quick storm that we had really did a fair bit of damage. Knocked out the guttering here in this place and the poor old uh, squirrel lost its home. So here's a good example of, again, one of these, uh, the architecture at corners. So this is the Si Kak Sao Ching Cha intersection. Sorry if I said that wrong. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong. Uh, this road here is Bam Murang Mung Road. Uh, and now it's a unique kind of shape. So just look at, look at the, uh, look at the shapes of the building. It's actually quite, it's circular. It's kind of like a roundabout without a middle. Uh, but if you look at the shops, shop houses around, they're really quite unique. This one here has got the clock at the top, but it's got a really cool like, logo and then kind of like a tick at the top. Really like it. Balcony area here. But yeah, these the intersections are so fascinating. Look at a big dragon at the top here. Oh, where is it? There. There's a big dragon. Taoism, the uh, yin yang symbol in the middle of that one. A lot of Chinese uh, symbolism here, uh, Chinese culture here. You get wherever, where, everywhere you look. Noodle man. So just to get your bearings, down the end, just maybe about uh, 50 meters away is the big red swing. So I'm gonna to tour this area in greater depth in, uh, in another video series. Um, and also we talked about this swing in episode one of season two, which was about the um, Leon Owens family. And they supplied the wood for the big swing. So episode one is about colonial period and Bunrak area. I love walking around and making connections. It's like, oh yeah, I know, I know. I, know, I remember talking about that. I know about that red swing. Time for a cup of coffee, I think. Uh, I'm near the Craftsman. I think I'm near the Craftsman. Let's see if I can find it. found the Craftsman, which is obviously a popular social media spot. And I've also, dude with the BMM, dude with the BMWs, uh, been unfortunately a victim of the storm. Looks like the uh, yellow corrugated iron slammed into his car. Poor fellow. So this here used to be a printing factory, and now it's been converted into one of the, an Instagram hotspot. 
go in and have a look and see if I can get a little drink. It's an excellent time for photographs. It's perfect uh, and video because it's just after the rain, so the sun's hidden, um, but things are being lit up. But it, everything's got this kind of like a, a wet look, which makes everything shiny. So, Luke photography tips after the rain, get your cameras out. Perfect time. As much as I love these kind of places and how popular they are with people, uh, I can't help but imagine is like, is this progress a good thing? You know, what has been knocked down here? What kind of community has been destroyed? Um, and I'm a big fan. If they can preserve as much architecture as possible, uh, I mean, we can't, one can't slow down progress. Progress is inevitable, particularly in a, in a city like Bangkok, where it's evolving and developing really, really fast. Uh, things are gonna change. But if we can preserve some of these wonderful old buildings, I know we can't com preserve communities, uh, sadly, but if we can com com preserve some of these wonderful old buildings, well, not we, they, um, I'll be so happy, because this is a beautiful old building, absolutely beautiful. Uh, so character-filled. I'm at the giant swing. Before I called it the big swing, but it's actually, the correct name is the giant swing. Now I've timed it very interestingly. Uh, they're filming something at the moment, so I can't really get too close, but I'll, I'll take some footage just from afar so you can kind of get the idea, but everyone's wearing black, jumping up and down, making lots of noise. Um, so I don't know if it's for a movie or an ad. Ties are, Ties have got some fantastic ads. Their advertising is, is really really fantastic if you've ever had the opportunity to watch some Thai ads they're 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 brilliant they're really really well done uh, so I've timed it quite well at the giant swing so I'll have to keep an eye out for this in the future uh, so when it pops up on my TV it's like ah oh, I know where that is I was there so the democracy monuments just there and if you want to know more about the democracy monument I've actually done a video about that and I strongly recommend you watch it. It's a ripper. Uh, and over here is the giant swing. There it is there. And just at the base of the giant swing. Is the film crew, cast and crew. So this most unique and mighty erection is called the Giant Swing. And I'll tell you more details about the Giant Swing in a future video. I'm gonna do a whole season, a series of videos all about the Ratanakosan area. Uh, so all about the buildings, all about the history of the place. But for now, well, that's the Giant Swing. And what a mighty erection she is. So here's my theory. There's a barricade there, there's a lot of people cheering, and there's a guy kind of running in front. What I reckon here, this is my theory, is there's a scene in a film or an ad where the, there's someone racing past and they're all cheering for him. That's my...
that's what I reckon it is. So while I was at the Craftsman, I was uh, admiring the architecture and a young lady started talking to me. She actually lives there, right next door to the Craftsman. And she told me a sad story about how the landlords are basically trying to evict her and her family from the place that they've lived for a long, long time because they want to renovate uh, that building and turn it into a boutique hotel. Which kind of just goes to show me, you know, there's more to every story. The more I've, I'm on this quest of learning and discovering Bangkok, the more I learn, the more I realise I don't know. And every building, every every uh, monument, every street, there's got just got so many stories to tell. And I just come to realise I'm barely scratching the surface. But I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to let that discourage me. I'm going to keep searching and keep learning because I'm enjoying this discovery of Bangkok a lot. Okay, my socks have been wet for the last three hours as I've been wandering around the streets. I've run out, my battery, GoPro, GoPro battery ran out a while ago and my phone battery now is about to expire. I think it's time for me to jump on my Vespa and head back home and have a, have a shower, grab a beer. And it's Saturday, so I'm gonna watch a bit of football. Been a great day out. I hope you've enjoyed the journey coming along with me. Stay tuned, part two coming up will be the street art, which I plan to film today, but uh, the trip took a detour and I think it's a detour for the better. So stay tuned up next, street art in the Sampan Tawong area. Oops. Sampan Tawong area, Banrak area, Chinatown area. So my friend uh, who I chatted with about the, who's kind of being forced out of her home that her, her family's been in for a long, long time, I think that's the story of a lot of places, particularly around uh, the Sampan Tawong district. Uh, developers purchase blocks or buildings and they want to return on their investments. So they've got plans to develop and make a buck. Um, and sadly, it's the some of the people, the residents who do suffer. Uh, and that's progress. Now, interestingly, uh, the landlord who this lady was talking about. When she talked about her place becoming a hotel, I said, oh, much more like, the, like this one. It says, it says here, S Hotel, S Hotel over there. Hotel 1962. And she goes, oh, that, that's not a hotel, that's fake. They just put a sign up. That's actually a resident, people live there. Anyway, that's a side point. Uh, the landlord that that lady was talking about, who's trying to evict her, Interestingly, it's two landlords. One is King Rama 10 and the other one is the nephew of King Rama 9. So it's those two who, they're actually the dispute. Uh, one of them wants to make a boutique hotel, uh, the other one doesn't. So they've actually ripped her house in half. Uh, so half of it's gone and the other half's remaining and that's where she lives but it's an absolute mess and it's falling apart. So I felt quite sad for her about her story. Um, but as is with the plight with a lot of uh, development uh, around this area so while I wander around superficially admiring the architecture and the modern designs uh, sadly there's probably some a few tragic stories behind the scenes that I'm completely unaware of I love wandering around the streets of Bangkok there's so much to see just have a look at this quaint ornate little guest house here which is just on the corner i'd love to stay in that place for a couple of nights it's just so cool uh, but then just look at the little alleyway down beside it so many of those little shop houses uh you know they're they're about 200 years old those shop houses there then we look further down the street we've got the ministry of defense that brilliant building that yellow building and then look at the damage that that storm did it's just ripped this tree out of the ground i'm glad i wasn't wandering around here during that storm it smashed the fence, smashed down the fence, ripped the tree, has been ripped right out from the ground. It was a mighty storm in a, in, a, in, a brief, in a brief period of time. It did a lot of damage.
So the tree fell down, smashed the fence of the building, which is the building for the Ministry of Interior. I think it's time they shift their focus to the exterior and fix up that fence. Yes, I'm the funny man.